There we go. <laughs> I made that today, Katie. All right. So thank you for doing this. I appreciate it. So Katie, do you want to uh, introduce yourself and tell us what you do? Okay. I'm um, Katie Ford and I help women release trauma so they can shine inside and out. And I do this through syncing mind and body coaching um, together because I see we have to embody both uh, from my own journey and experience and working with thousands of women um, over 18 years, um, come from the personal training journey and then stepped more into the uh, coaching and mindset coaching and now combine these two together um, to really help the lady to get a real transformation inside and out because I know that's um, that's powerful when we connect those two together from my own journey and then sharing this with other women. <laughs> nice. I like the way you uh, explained it. Would you say that starting off with the physical is quite common for people? Oh, yes. Um, um, in my own journey and then obviously witnessing this through, through women, there's the search for the ideal physique or the ideal body shape or by changing the body then this is going to make us feel a certain way and from my experience and then witnessing this with clients um they get there and they're still they still feel something's missing um so through my own journey um realized that that was time to step into um the mindset and what goes on in this crazy place up here. Yeah. yeah, nice. It'd be interesting to hear other people's sort of point of view on that actually, to see if they've had the same experience. Yeah. To see if they've they've worked hard to to lose weight and get in shape and discovered that actually there's still something bothering them. Yeah. 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 No, that's nice. I like that. Um so a big question that comes up for me when it comes to what people consider mindset. Sometimes I think people can get into mindset work as a way to try and bypass what you talk about, which is trauma. You know, they don't want to feel something, but they do want to feel something else. And sometimes there's the assumption that, oh, if I do this and work on this, I'm never going to have to feel this again. It's almost like an avoidance as opposed to actually, OK, I need to address this stuff. Have you experienced that with people going down the whole mindset route? Um, yes, and I think that um, it's all a journey. I think people reach um, a point when they're ready. Um, so I think, first of all, um, even being, in my experience, um, brave to, to start to look from a mindset experience, first of all, this can then open our awareness. And then we have a choice to step into where we can get that little bit more uncomfortable to get comfortable, to get to get to a place where we discover more about um, what's what's deep rooted under there, which is going to help us to have because all of us want more more freedom, we want more peace, uh, but that comes with with obviously looking that little bit deeper than the surface. Um, that be initially with my experience, you look at the body, then we look at the mindset, and then there's like let's let's really have a look what's going going on um, underneath that. Um, so I think everybody has their own journey, um, and everybody arrives if they choose to um, at that place, um, and then they they can open up to to delve in that little bit deeper into the deeper work. Mm, yeah, for sure. Do you find it a challenge? to not try and encourage people to want to? I think I have, um, I like to pride myself on um, having a, an intuition. So, but I have learned, so in other words, you can see sometimes what people may um, may need, but it's not for me to, for me, you can, I can only, take them on a journey uh, for them to they've got to step into that space when they're ready um and i mean in my experience um that's when the best results come because they're they're ready to step in there you can't you can't it's, it's this it's the old-fashioned um you can take a horse to water but you can't make it drink and then you've got to be ready to slurp 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 um so there's a there's a there's a point there yeah. 
Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. The mind is very resistant to change, isn't it? So yeah, I agree. we want to be familiar back to our comfortable, yeah. per well, uncomfortable patterns a lot of the time. It depends which way yeah. we go with this. <gasps> yeah, for sure. So you said that you can sometimes see that perhaps people are needing work on those areas. Yeah, what would that probably like? through. Sorry, say that again, Danny. What would that look like? If you can see that they need to work on certain areas, can you tell me how that would kind of present itself, what you would notice, what you would pick up on? Um, habits and behaviours in their life. Yeah. Um, which sometimes um, you can see um, and you're aware of um, for you, for the people that you work with. Um, so, yeah, so generally patterns and behaviours. And sometimes... Um, how yeah just how they how they conduct their life and the things that they come up against because you keep coming up against often the same things um if you um yeah before maybe you're ready to to look at it and then so yeah patterns and behaviors is, is the, the main things okay yeah i suppose for me i'm a keen one for looking at language i think yeah. language is one of the most direct routes into seeing where someone is not acknowledging that it's them yeah. a, a, the biggest pattern in my experience is use of the term you when we're speaking about ourselves. you tends to generalize doesn't it as opposed yeah. to make it about our own experience so i think language can be a very direct route into that yeah um, but maybe too direct and in it's, my experience it's, sometimes yeah. it's what someone's not saying more than mm. what they are saying and um, you can you yeah. can obviously start to build more of um an understanding by what sometimes people aren't saying um yeah. and I because we often say don't say what um yeah there's yeah. the true behind so this it's um making I, I guess um also as well what what i've learned is creating a safe space for people like the power in creating safe space starts to to take people on a on a journey that then allows them to um to explore more, become more curious. Um, mm. That's that's the power is is in the safe space uh, when yeah. working with people. Okay, what you said there, that's really, um, that's a big one for me. Like you said, creating a safe space. Mm -hmm. So when we're talking about trauma, mm -hmm. often what we're looking at is people have had certain periods of their life where they haven't fundamentally felt safe yeah so in order to actually start to draw that out creating that safe space when they're you know dealing with a lot of those emotions that historically they would have run from mm -hmm. how do you personally go about creating that safe space because it's not in fact let me rephrase that question so what would you say a safe space looks like I guess it's allowing it's someone circumstances, is it? It's not like a comfy couch and a nice touch room. space. Yeah. Um I think first of all, um building great rapport up with, with clients and and this is something that um I think knowing that I think often how how I am with clients as well is I share my own vulnerability, I share my own um experiences which allows them to feel um i guess understood a bit more and also i think allowing them to like they say vulnerability is power and saying that that is that is okay but i think it's all very individual because one person's safe space is very different to another and um, so first i mean the you've got to you've got to work with that client and 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 really understand that client because that safe space is going to be different for for each for each person and we it's it's about working together because it is a coaching is about working together and and getting um to a to a place where you can um you can really start to to get those powerful breakthroughs and changes that um that can happen um, so it's a it's a very much a together thing and a safe space is very individual. Okay. So if I was to answer my own question there, 
<laughs> I would say that it's presence that heals. Yeah. So that it from us from the position of coaching, it's able to be with them where they're at yeah. without trying to change them. Yeah. So it's the presence that heals. If I was trying to, you know, just say this yeah. is how that would appear. And obviously yeah. that can appear in lots of different ways. Yeah. All right. So I'm interested, Katie, in learning a bit more about your journey. And I'll happily share mine with you if you want to, you know, just go just go back and forth. Yeah. Um and then be really curious to to know more about you know how you take the ladies you work with on the on the journey that they go on. You know, what what that would look like working with you, let's say. So yeah. Oh, there's a couple of comments here. Let me show this for you. Um, so this is from Ornella. She says, pattern and behavior language, safe space, perfect. Love you both. That's mm -hmm. nice. <laughs> love. We like love. <laughs> and sure, sure, <laughs> presence does heal. I won't show that one. And then she's also, uh, Julie Dawn, a friend of yours, I'm guessing, says, you're amazing, Katie. Oh. <laughs> I'll slip with a tenor later. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So tell us a little bit about, because um, I've seen some of your photos on your profile where you're like all buff and oiled up and, and tanned. Was that your journey into like trying to achieve some level of physical perfection? Yeah. I mean, so for me, um, I think the biggest thing that I – Okay, so let's, how shall we go there with this? I'm going to go there. I'm going to go there. All right. So I, I lost my dad when I was 17. Um, and Do you, feel, can you say that? Put him. Do you feel that? You yeah, feel that? I feel yeah. that. I feel that. Yeah. And, um, and I allow myself to feel that these days, which is all part of me, of the, of the journey um, of where I've come from, because I, um, I was always um, very much an achiever and um, and a, I was strong. Like it was, it was. I was an athlete. I came from. Um, I when I was younger, my dad was a coach. He was a coach for um, for in endurance and race walking. His main um, his main uh, focus was females as well. So I was always around like powerful females um, and seeing that very um, strong nature. So I was around it, which has a massive um, positive effect and very inspired. Um, but when I, um, I mean, God, there's, there's, there's the journey you can talk, I'm going to summarize. Um, but when I, um, I used to get a lot from my achievement of my athletics, um, that be um, validation, all right, because you win the medal, oh you matter that's amazing um and um when i lost my dad my whole life changed um in the sense of um he i didn't only just lose my dad i, I lost um i lost a coach as well because i had two different like relationships and um and i I've been on a journey and I believe that what I was seeking when I did the bikini competing, although it was an amazing experience, but it was the it was the beginning of me understanding how to validate myself because the achieving and um and all the the, the thrive for um, the the success of the athletics and and what have you. I mean, there's there's obviously a light and a shadow side, and the light side is it's great you're achieving, uh, but the shadow side is I don't matter when I don't achieve. That was the old story. So I went on the path. I went on the journey of the bikini competing, and and then from there I um yeah I've had to be on a journey to to understand how to validate myself um be it just in my own right like and that's been a a journey in itself so so yeah, yeah. um you can remind me of the question again because i've gone off on a tangent which is i'm a little firework head yeah. no that's all right man. <laughs> I, I get a sense that will, that will happen quite a lot throughout our chat which yeah i, I enjoy that anyway so i'm gonna look at some of the terminology that we've learned on trainings we've done which is yeah. validation is kind of more masculine energy that sort yeah. of like pat on the back yeah has that 
lack of validation or what you perceived as lack of validation resulted in difficulties, let's say, in relationships with men at all? Um, okay, word that slightly different. So, so ask me a different way so I can under, really understand. All right. So the fact that you were looking for validation yeah and the fact that you use the word lost um lost your dad the fact that that led to you looking for validation mm -hmm. has that resulted in any difficulties in relationship with with men yeah because there's that there's the um the seek of the seek of that isn't it the seek of the validation yeah. also um yeah so it's it, it's kind of i think i've all, i've been in a when i look at the pattern like often looking for male coaches as well and um, there's definitely like a um a seek of that that was that was missing still part of me really um now is aware of that so i can because i think when you have an awareness she can then um understand that um so yeah that has come up like within within yeah so so yeah it, it, it has because i think losing that masculine energy in your life distorts the balance of like how you how you look at things and see things and what you are wanting and and um yeah so so it has yeah yeah, that resonates with me, actually, because I think we've both bumped into the same hurdle to a degree <laughs> in that that sort of more masculine energy of, right, this is what we're fucking doing, you know? It's sort of, there's a bit of like, a, ooh, you know? Like, we can't quite do it to ourselves, and it's taken us a while to get to the point where, like, no, just get on with it. You'll learn yeah. as you go. Yeah. Yeah. Have yeah. you historically had a tendency... Because this is another thing I notice when people go down the route of mindset, particularly if it's more feminine dominated in its in its sort of energy, that constant sort of going in results in a lack of action sometimes. Have you ever oh. found that happen? Explain to me what you mean by going in. So, so elaborate okay. on going in. Yeah. Okay, so when we start to reflect and do the what people call inner work and looking at different parts and all that stuff. It's very easy to find yourself spending so much time in there looking for something else to fix rather than saying, well, actually, a lot of it is only going to be shown to me once I start heading forwards. Have you found that you can sometimes use that stuff as a, that almost becomes your comfort space? Yeah, de definitely, and I think I think that's something that's only come to my awareness probably, probably the last two years. And I think I was thinking about this the other day actually um, on a run, um, and um, which I'm back running, falling back in love with running, um, which has been a something which I'm quite proud of at the moment, um, seeing it a different way. And um, I think you can go down a rabbit hole because you can learn from the, from the self development but the only way that you really understand um is by living the life school life is our school and you've got to there's this you've got to then take it and live it and do it because you can keep going down the rabbit hole of of self discovery and mindset and i have definitely been on that little rabbit hole plenty of times but i do i was thinking about this but i think it depends on i mean for me now i have um certain people that i really resonate with and i will often listen or to the same same things over and over again rather than going into a place where you are um learning so much and getting so much influence um because i think what I have learned is only you know what works for you. And for me, when I've become more connected to myself so I can listen to, to me, and that's only come probably from people actually showing me that, that mirror. I mean, that of going like, you know the stuff, Katie. You, 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 or, or not you know the stuff, but the, you, there's, there's, a, there's how much more do you want to know? 
how much more or how much more do you want to delve down that and that's sometimes a hard pill to swallow um and then for me these last kind of like i guess year has been what works for me because you can listen to the 5am you can listen to the e-myth you can listen to all these things and we could go on but really the biggest power is in when when you can connect with yourself and this is my biggest thing that i now um want to share with with the women that i work with is really connecting back to yourself and that's that's not an easy thing to to do it's it's but it's it's amazing when you start to really listen to your own like what is what works for me like and and really connecting yeah. that is powerful because listening to your inner voice listening to your body and what it's saying to you it, we can look at this in all aspects we can look at this on from a food aspect because we we know when things are working for us and when they're not or we can do it from a making a decision um and yeah, yeah. you and connecting back to yourself that's a big lesson that i've learned yeah. this past um this past year okay you shared quite a lot there <laughs> so, so, i'm really trying to listen so i can pick out anything that's like really of, of interest so um so there were two things that, that jumped out at me one was like you said people just listening to themselves and, and sometimes i wonder how many people are still looking for someone else to tell them what to do because i recognize i can slip into that sometimes this space of uncertainty and almost like a, a not sure what the right thing is to do which of course comes in my experience from a subtle fear of getting it wrong, which is why we can then end up looking for someone else to tell us what to do. It yeah. means we don't have to take responsibility. Yeah. So I, I recognize the, the patterns that we get caught in, but I do think that quite often people are just looking for someone else to tell them what to do. Yeah, I've been there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, because it's easier, isn't it? It's easier because then if someone yeah. else tells you what to do, then you, you've not got to take responsibility. Yeah, it's they told me to do it or or looking for, I think there's a difference between sharing and hearing other people because, but it's how you then take that and then you can take the advice, you can take the information, but then it's like, okay, now where do I, where do I feel with this? Because that's humans, that's connection, that's that's that sound out, whether it be a friend, a coach, a therapist, or but when it comes back to it, the power of 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 listening, what's gonna work for me. And that's not that's 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 challenging, but it's um but that that is the part of understanding and, and knowing yourself better, which is um which is a which is a journey. Um but yeah. 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 So I'm gonna share with you <laughs> so many people basically giving you validation. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> there you go. You're getting everything you want. Look, Shelly Scott's giving you a heart. <laughs> Kate says, You are an inspiration, Katie. <laughs> uh, Law says, Get uncomfortable to get comfortable. Love it. You said that. So she's kind of saying she loves you. <laughs> That's my best mate. <laughs> yeah. Luke, Luke Friff. Gave you a heart and a diamond. <laughs> yeah. Is that like a proposal? Oh, no. <laughs> That's the diamond for uh, Shine Bright Like a Diamond. Okay, cool. <laughs> and then Anne Roberts says, you are amazing, Katie. So lots of people telling you you're amazing. So I think you're getting the validation that you seek. The, the It comes back to them. Um, and I so appreciate it because it's, who doesn't like to feel appreciation um yeah. however along my path it's um, and what i do share with my clients is it's how we give that appreciation to self because that's the that's the that's the voice that we carry with us the whole time and that's something i've worked on long and hard i mean i remember doing some of the shine brights where I've had a book where I wanted them to write their experience and um, and they've shared such beautiful things. And it took me six months to even open that book because I couldn't read what people were putting about me. Like this is a new space that I'm now in where I can actually um, 
look at what someone's saying you're amazing and and take that in a neutral sense take that in a neutral sense like i i appreciate their experience of me and and i'm so grateful but the the it's when you can can hear that and and take that in a neutral space that 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 that's coming from that same something i've had to learn to do um because we can either push it away or we can pull it in too much and there's got to be that that yeah. space where it's it's so lovely to have that as their experience um of you because that is their experience um of, and yeah. i'm grateful so just, thank you for sharing your experience <laughs> yeah. have you ever I've done this on a meditation retreat before and also did it on one of Rich's masterminds, actually. It's like you said, written down, but delivered uh, to someone sat in a chair, like a room of people, just one at a time, sharing their experience of another person. That's Have I done cool. that? Yeah. Yeah, I've done that. It? We do that. We do that. Yeah. We've done that many a times on Shine Bright Like a Diamond. It's yeah. really powerful. Yeah. So Very when nice. you see and you pass it around and then and then you read out their experience. So everybody writes what their experience is of you and then yeah. read it out. It's a, a very powerful exercise. Yeah. Oh, I haven't done it like that, written it down. I've I've only ever delivered it as the people just speak it to the person sat in the chair one oh. at a time yeah okay. so they just look at you and and say it to you yeah, yeah. i found that very powerful yeah. yeah okay so we went um we really got sidetracked there didn't we okay so you were sharing about your own journey all right so you did your um what would you call it bodybuilding what what was it you were doing in the bikini with the the tan and all that i am um... I started with Miss Galaxy Universe because so it was it was it was actually a fitness show because it wasn't just the bikini competing. So it was we did fitness in the morning. It was basically like I'm GI. Proud of you, by the way, Pardon? I'm sorry to interrupt you. I'm sorry to interrupt you. I know that's a little bit rude, but I wanted to show you something because this is from your mum. <laughs> Shit! <laughs> wow, how many people would love to have something like that from their parents come up? Huh? I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful yeah. to my mom. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that, yeah, that's really beautiful. Okay, Katie, carry on. So, did you call it Miss Galaxy Universe? Yeah, that's what it was called. It was an amazing, oh. amazing right. association. Um, yeah. Yeah, so it was like GI Jane meets Miss World, basically. You did the fitness oh, in the morning, and okay. then you got pretty in the bikini, and the and then the gown. Um, so it was kind of a bit like CrossFit, and then you did bikini in the in the afternoon. Uh, CrossFit wasn't really you probably think it was in America back then, but we thrashed it out against each other. So that's where I was really pulled because it had that athletic side to it, and that's what I hid behind a little bit because I was very embarrassed by doing the actual bikini um, mm -hmm. part of it because it wasn't very popular back then. Um, and also that really made me shit myself, excuse my French, but walking, I wasn't dead, I danced, but, and being on stage, but I'd never, I was the kind of girl that used to probably like put a sarong on to go to the bikini, go to the, the bar. Like I didn't, I wasn't, it was an uncomfortable place to, to be, but it was, uh, it, it led me on a journey, uh, which I'm so grateful for. And I'm mm. so grateful to Miss Galaxy Universe because it, it helped me discover myself for sure yeah. wonderful okay so then you you reach that the, the the heights of miss galaxy universe yeah and then you which direction did you head in after that then did you have this realization that oh okay I've, I've done this but there's still some stuff i want to address okay so <laughs> The direction I honestly went um, yeah. was a bit of a breakdown. It was um, quite a, I'd yeah. hit, I'd literally hammered my body for two years and, um, and my body started to, I got adrenal fatigue um, and I was gaining weight and I didn't really, my fitness had always been like a bit like my, my superpower and that was leaving me. I didn't really, it was quite a crazy time and, I um I, I was so fatigued and um I really had to sit and, and look and that is when I really opened my eyes up to okay um I need to look at things differently here so that's when I started kind of like the mindset journey and healing journey if I'm honest yeah no it's interesting what you say it is quite common 
in in my experience that the way people approach uh, physical pursuits is almost like a punishment of the body as opposed to a way of supporting it, nourishing it, maintaining it, looking at it as, okay, this is my vehicle. What's the best way of looking after it? Yeah. Often it's like, how do I get myself to look the way that is considered desirable? Oh, yeah, definitely. And, I mean, there's, um, I mean, in, in, in my experience, like anything done to an extreme is a form of it can like even exercise can be an addiction um and i and i was like i i had a quite a balanced approach to my bikini competing on that side um however um my body basically my body it was like my body just decided to start to give in on me i got injured on my last competition then the adrenal fatigue started to happen um so yeah and that could have been looking back I was pushing my body to a yeah. to a point of yeah okay so your kind of um your call to start addressing things was the body starting to fall apart a little bit yeah yeah because I've never experienced really that before um yeah. and that was different gotcha all right so upon your body starting to just get injured you know the the pains and the problems you were having what what was the next step for you which direction did you head in to start looking at the like the mental and emotional areas um my own so i i just started opening my awareness um myself so i started um myself and then um i went on to the holistic coaching program and with that you so i wanted to become a holistic coach myself um eileen mccotter she was um i come across her during a business um program and i was like i want to delve here and you have to work on yourself before you can work on anybody else mm. so um that's what i did and i started to open up to a whole new world um of, of healing um on that journey and yeah so that was the start of it because i because i often say you're often um changes often change often ha change happens by inspiration or desperation and i was at a desperation stage of kind of like there's got to be a, a different way because it was like i just knew something wasn't right and and i wanted to explore yeah i like that change happens by inspiration or desperation, or desperation. Yeah, is that one of your own? Do you know what I can't claim? I can't claim that. I've, I've obviously kind of brought. I, I've, it's it's okay. in this here. Whether I created it or whether thing about, I've got a feeling it's stolen from somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> have, that's, yeah. Have you noticed with so much of the different angles we can go down with with mindset work? My experience, there's a lot of the same stuff, but just said in different ways. Oh yeah. And it's just finding the way that resonates resonates yeah. better with you. Yeah. Nice. Okay. So you did the holistic coaching training. You also did rapid transformational therapy. Yeah. So I'm still, I'm about to finish that um, in the next month or two. Just need to pull okay. my socks up and get my exam done. Um, the reason that I, so along the journey, um, for me, I um I realise that some things that we um, some things we need to look to the subconscious. So for me, I wanted to look into a modality, a technique that enabled you to look at the sub, go to the subconscious. Um, in my own journey, journey I've used um, EFT, emo emotional freedom technique. Yeah. I'm also studying that at the moment, and then I've also had my experience with rapid transformational therapy, which is a few techniques molded together which is hypnosis nlp and c um and uh, oh god cbt yeah nlp cbt okay. and um hypnosis so that then allows us to unlock the um the subconscious so we can really get to the root yeah. of often uh, what's happening because there's a lot where we can't there's a lot of talk therapy and things that we can't always get to the root of the problem so that's where I um, started to open my eyes up to that side as well. Yeah, 
Yeah, gotcha. Where does the body come into it with the the coaching that you do now? Where the body comes into it at the moment is, um, I mean, I help with, I, I, I mean, a lot of my coaching is very bespoke. So it's what I see within within that client. So um, within movement, so I do obviously the, the personal training side and that side and embody that side through. Uh, but it's something that, um, that, yeah, that I'll probably explore every moment. So there's a literal sense of actually mm -hmm. the 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 body part of kind of like my, my coaching um but yeah it's um it's something that i'm i'm looking more into so you yeah. mean in the embodiment yeah i mean like you say that we've, we've got the discovery and we've got the exploring that's done with all the all the mindset work for me obviously i come from spending a lot of time with, in yoga and meditation and ashrams and monasteries and all of that stuff is really useful, but there's certain things that aren't revealed to us on a mat or on a cushion. Okay. So in movement or in you know, meditation. Yeah. And that is what I tend to think of as the interrelational. So anything that isn't revealed to us when we're by ourselves, it's always mirrored to us through relationships, isn't it? Yeah. And what tends to happen is people that are more focused on the physical stuff will often miss out the the kind of the mindset meditation angle but sometimes people that are very into the mindset and meditation stuff are not very embodied there's a lot yeah. of um, mindset coaches and psychotherapists and stuff are in terrible physical condition you know because they're just they're very much in that space yeah for me they've got to all come together because sometimes we might not notice the the thought process when we're in an interaction but we can feel it in the body. We can feel yeah. the emotion can come up. We can feel the postural adaptation. We can notice the change in breath. Yeah. All of those things are much easier to grab a hold of and adjust as opposed to every time something comes up, we have to go off into, oh, what, what is part of me needing? All that kind of stuff, you know? So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, just curious. I guess yeah, yeah, I guess I understand the question now, which is which is yeah. getting out of, I guess, I do this with clients in the sense of like we work through like breathing. Um, yes, there's the element of meditation, but as part of my programs, um, there's yoga and, and that side. And really, I mean, as simple as just where are you feeling those things in your body? Like that's a lot yeah. what we address in my coaching. Um, so we can really kind of get get out of here and start to really feel what's what's going off where's the tension what are we feeling where is that because there's a lot often that is that is part of connection isn't it connecting back to to self and our bodies because we can just so disconnect disassociate and then that's where we're not really um kind of we're not really healing properly when we're not in connection with our with our bodies yeah 100 yeah. percent and I would say disassociating is a common trauma response, isn't it? To not embody things is a common trauma response. We, we're trying to find ways to avoid feeling. So getting into the body can be a real area of discomfort for a lot of people. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. It's a, it's a, that's just a, that's, that's a, a journey in itself as part of a journey, isn't it? To really start to, to understand what, to even, I mean, the simple question of what I'll, I'll share with my clients is asking what you're actually feeling. Just that question itself can be so powerful because when are we ever taught to, to do that? Um, we, so it's really powerful to even ask ourselves that question, even if we don't get all the answers right there and then, because it's a it's a it's a practice isn't it that's part of and mm. holding and just being curious of, of yeah. that and how we feel yeah i like what you said that asking yourself how are you feeling or asking another how are you feeling gives rise to then exploring how we communicate what we're feeling which is often a reflection of how we are communicating with ourselves so yeah, I, I think that's a really crucial area. And then we can look at, okay, so what? look at the language pattern you're using to describe 
that emotion. Because so often, I don't know if you've noticed this, we can judge our emotions. I don't want to feel this. I do want to feel this. So that becomes another kind of, we're, we're caught up in that bungee run again. It's like we want to move towards something, but as soon as we feel something we don't like, we're getting pulled back again. So, you know, the language we use to discuss our emotions, I think, is is also crucial too. Yeah. And yeah. like you say, there's only so much of this you can do just by going off into your own head and by talking a lot of it it's like okay you've got to show up in the here and now with a person yeah and I think that's what excites me about learning new ways yes you have your own like for me I've I've really kind of like explored lots of lots of ways because I'll be honest my I, I have um something that my dad said to me is what do you want to be when you grow up he used to say mm -hmm. to all my friends he used to say to, to me what do you want to be when you grow up and um and it's it's happy but i think that in itself for me that said it's very paradox because sometimes you can go when you disassociate i'm not happy i'm off this way and and because that must look better that's shiny syndrome or the grass is greener and mm -hmm. but happiness is an emotion itself how do you know what true happiness is if you don't have the paradox but we don't want to have the paradox and the sadness and the we because that's just too uncomfortable but it's like happiness is an emotion and yes it's for me now, it's like, how many more happy days can you have? Like, and how quicker can you move into a space? Because to be happy all the time is, is yeah, it's, that's um, asking for, um, it's, it's, it's an emotion, isn't it? So there's always an, a paradox. So it's yeah. like, for me now, what I've learned it is how many happy days can, can we have? But it, but it's led me on to really explore lots of different techniques that I can share with with clients and share um, along the way because to, mm. to help people as much as possible. Yeah. I suppose yeah. we could simplify that and just say, how long can you be happy for? Yeah. And how yeah. quick can you bounce back? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. I like to think, I think I've said this to you before, all emotions are visitors. We can't, we can't hold them yeah. because when we're starting to go into a process of trying to hold them, then we go into the process of trying to manage circumstances and situations that we say are responsible for, for our own happiness. Yeah. So there, there's a, that can be a tricky game to play if you like, well, I only want to feel this way. Yeah. Because then as soon as we're not, we can easily start looking for things to change. And yeah. 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 Are we able to be with more of it as opposed to constantly fight for preference? Yeah. 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 That's what I like yeah. to think. Yeah. OK, so here's a question for you. And this allows for a little bit of um, back and forth, I suppose. What would you say are your because for me, a lot of this stuff is very much about letting go. You know. What would you say are the areas that you're still kind of having to address? Like for me the ones I recognize, and this has only been as a result of being with Nazgul and having a baby, the, how much love can I accept and allow? Mm -hmm. And then what that gives rise to, which I hadn't been aware of before, is a part of me that fears loss. Yeah, so as the, the love grows, it's almost sort of equaled by an awareness of uh, the level of fear of losing that. So it's quite interesting to see that that appear. That sort of happened for over the last year for me. And I wasn't really aware of it before. I think certain things are, you can't force them into awareness, can you? You know, no. that life will reveal it to us. And, and I'd only really become aware of it over the last year. So that's my area, you know, to sort of, just trust more, trust that fundamentally I'll be okay, you know, Yeah. that loss doesn't equate to me just falling apart, that I'll be okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. But what do you recognise is your area to kind of work on a bit? I, I think which is interesting is, um, and I guess it's, this is how, how people hear this, and, and I guess that we're in this space where we're talking more in this, this language, but... Um, Feeling safe, 
Yeah. So allowing, knowing that how I do that for myself. Um, and there's parts of you that really takes that on board and that you, because I believe I feel more safe with myself and and keeping myself safe and I guess this is hard this is not the literal sense of safe this is this is you being able to nurture yourself you being yeah. able to comfort yourself not expecting that from an outside um source that be anybody anything well. say that again but, sorry Danny. not denying it too yeah yes. you, yeah because that happens as well doesn't it if you've got an attachment style of avoidance you yeah. can deny yourself the reassurance and support actually you're needing yeah so i think that's something that i'm aware of and i feel like it's something that's still a journey and still so yeah along with many other things god i'm definitely um i'm definitely a, a china bowl that's broken and pulling these pieces together i forgot what it's called is it is it the um I think there's a can't remember the exact terminology, but that's what it is, isn't it? It's we 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 put ourselves, we're we're pieces coming back together and stuff. So I'm I'm a work in progress for sure. <laughs> but yeah. the, but that's something that I'm aware of is because that that's something that I'm giving quite a bit of attention is, yeah, feeling safe. Yeah, no, I totally get it, and I, I'm blessed to have a, a a wonderful teacher that when it comes to matters of the heart. That's where I'm going to talk to him, him and Nazgul. And he he said to me, you, you can't think yourself into safety. Yeah. You know, the, the mind doesn't operate that We've way. We've spoke about this. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but you've got to drop into the here and now. Yeah. Uh, and that requires a letting go of, you could even say any aspect of mindset work, you know. Yeah. That stuff's got no place in, in presence. You know? Yeah. So it's like just dropping into what your experience is right yeah. now. But yeah. And that I think can be can be a challenge for sure, particularly if you've experienced trauma. Yeah. Because yeah, it's, so, it's so hardwired in, in your brain to just keep retreating. How would you, I'm going off on a tangent again. I think it's just I'm enjoying our chat. But I remember I did a live video about this once. And what I've come to recognize, Katie, is that fundamentally either you feel like your experience is one you can open up into, which I would say is feeling safe, or your experience feels like you've, you've got to pull back in some way. You know, it can be simplified to that. And, you know, in your formative years, if you have a lot of periods where you have, you feel like you have to retreat, mm -hmm. then that becomes quite... It's such a common pattern that often you don't even realize you're doing it, you know? Yeah. So are you starting to notice all of the little triggers for the retreat? Oh, yeah. And you've got to, it's like what I, you've got to feel the feels and, and really be honest. Um, and... And that's when sometimes in my own experience, when you can show up for when you are retreating and really look into that, that's when shifts happen because you learn about the you learn about yourself and you learn about yeah, shifts and breakthroughs happen, but you have to firstly be aware, then allow yourself to hold a mirror up is what I say and, and see it because you can't move through it if you don't see it and the easy place is but the, it's it's how much you want to keep retreating before you want to sometimes though there's that that's that's what this experience that's what a, a, a healing journey is about is sometimes it's not your time you can't even see it there's you're not you're in such protection mode you can't see it and that's okay and that's yeah. okay but then when you start to move into a new space and and um allow yourself to see yourself retreating sit with that shifts can start to happen in yeah. my experience yeah. and i think there is no greater place that these things play out than in our closest relationships personally 
Oh, yeah. I'm sure. I have no doubt that you bump into it. And I'm sure everybody who pays attention, if they really acknowledge their own relationships, they'll see where it happens. Um, yeah. it's, it's called rupture and repair, isn't it, in psychotherapy terms, that, you yeah. know, that we get such sense of connection from our closest relationships that it could be you know, a word, a facial expression, all sorts of different things can cause us to have this sense of like, oh, I'm no longer loved in the way that I'm used to. And yeah. that can then trigger an old pattern. So I think our closest relationships are one of our best because, mirrors. Yeah, oh, biggest mirrors. Yeah, you you learn so much about yourself when you're relating. Like that's that's what it is. A relationship is relating to another human, and that can be and pull up the most uncomfortable and most yeah. And it can really you can learn a lot about yourself if you if you want to if you want to <laughs> yeah i suppose we could say how you relate to relationships yeah yeah, yeah. so yeah. there's a couple more <laughs> so rich put love you both <laughs> rich. i'm very super proud of you for doing this uh, you'll be from what i understand you'll be stroking his beard at the retreat he was saying he's gonna grow out <laughs> you can you can stroke his beard all right Katie, I, I do get a feeling we could probably sit and chat for for ages it's, and ages um how do people get hold of you if, if they're if they resonate with your message if they would really want to explore kind of learning more or doing some work with you how would they get hold of you simple as literally drop me a message on my personal instagram but then there's also my coaching with katie ford page so please go and follow me on there uh, but both um angles um i'm sharing and also you can just drop me a, a message and we can um we can connect and see nice. how i can um how i can maybe maybe help nice katie thank you so much for doing this i uh, i do appreciate it thank you everybody for the comments you've got so much um katie you're amazing you're an inspiration you've receive like one of the greatest comments i think anyone can get from their parents personally oh, nice. i'm so proud of you that's uh yeah that's beautiful <laughs> and then ornella has written loads she's she's a lovely lady she always writes quite a lot lovely lovely lady so yeah i'm gonna um i'm gonna say goodbye to everybody and then we'll we'll wrap up in the background after and thank you for having me thank you for saying i mean this is obviously and um, anybody's, it's an experience again. It's obviously subjective. Cool person. Thanks for that, Danny. Thanks <laughs> yeah. for letting me be one of your cool people. Yeah. I appreciate no. Yeah, no, that. Thank you for doing that. This is something I've been thinking. Okay, it's just something I want to add into podcast episode. Just having a chat with someone that I like chatting to. Yeah. 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 Just uh, I could learn from and that people could benefit just from seeing a conversation between us. Yeah. yeah. Cool. yeah and sometimes you never know it's like a droplet and it can just buy yeah. some you never know what who you can um inspire by one comment or one share or what have you yeah, yeah. For sure. um, all right thank so let's you. say goodbye to everybody yeah see you later <laughs>